Do you understand how ill you are? You're completely delusional. It is crazy. It is sickening, to be totally honest. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're gonna react to Pick Up Limes with their video Foods That Fight Inflammation. Pick Up Limes is a huge YouTube channel with 3.7 million subscribers at the moment. And as far as I know, they are promoting a vegan diet. As we all know on this channel, veganism is highly inflammatory. How do you want to lower inflammation by eating all of those carbohydrates. I'm very curious to see what she's going to recommend. Let's have a look. Yeah. <laughs> sure. That's the right choice. Wow, man. Inflammation is our immune system's defense mechanism. It helps protect us against mm -hmm. disease and infection, injury, and even stress. Yeah, she's terribly skinny. As you can see, she wears a thick coating of makeup. Nevertheless, you can see her skull bones penetrating through the skin almost. Classical vegan look. And in the short term, it's actually a good thing, but we don't want inflammation sticking around. It's a shame term, because she could it, be pretty. It can lead to chronic pain and even disease within itself. And so that's what I wanted to chat about today, how we can avoid or reduce unnecessary inflammation by eating certain foods that have yeah. anti-inflammatory effects. Okay, on that note, we know that meat is the least inflammatory food there is. Meat has no carbohydrates, no sugar. You can be in a ketogenic state if you have some sort of autoimmune disease. It is the perfect food that comes with no fiber, no anti-nutrients, needless to say, no gluten, no phytates, nothing. So meat would be the first on the list. Now let's see what she recommends. Now, some Limes. of you might already know this, but before starting this channel, I actually worked in the field of nutrition as a dietitian, cool. and I learned a lot about the power of foods in fighting. Yeah, as a dietitian, you're absolutely qualified because the vegans like to say, Bobby, you're not a dietitian. So therefore, we are appealing to authority over here. But what is the use of it? Most dietitians nowadays, nutritionists, doctors, they get fed with a corporate agenda. Nothing more and nothing less. Whole grains are healthy for you. Vegetables are healthy healthy for you. You are nothing but a studied idiot. And I wanted to dive into what those foods are. It's today. true. And you're going to see loads of recipes featured wow. kind of throughout the video. So keep Always your eye on this recipe man. alert sign, which essentially just means that recipe link for you is in the description box below. Thank now you. Let's dive in. Let's eat the rainbow. So this is super cool. Plants have developed their own defense mechanism to help them fight off certain bacteria, fungi, insects, and even viral infections. And part of their immune system are these compounds that are called phytochemicals that are also known as phytonutrients. And what happens is... <laughs> now you said it correctly, phytochemicals. They are also known as phytonutrients nowadays because they try to brainwash you. How are they nutrients it doesn't make any sense whatsoever you know clearly what nutrition is right if we talk about the macronutrients you have the fats you have the carbohydrates and you have the proteins if we talk about the micronutrients of course you have vitamin a b c d e f g etc so that being said a <laughs> phytochemical can never be a nutrient, especially not if you look into what the human body needs. As I said, macros and micros. Once that is satisfied, you absolutely don't need anything else other than maybe a little bit of water. Especially if you're cooking your foods, then you need to add some hydration to the mix. So now you said as well that those are phytochemicals that are there to defend the plant. And this is absolutely accurate. You learned that correctly. Plants don't want to be eaten. Plants don't have fangs or claws, sharp teeth. They don't have anything to defend themselves other than those anti-nutrients. They try to poison the attacker. This is why they have anti-nutrients. But in this case, you are the attacker. Don't you get it? They try to poison you. Plants are poisonous. Most of them are poisonous to varying levels. 
Now you take those poisonous plants <laughs> and you cook them to the ground in order to be able to extract some nutrition out of them. Nevertheless, they're still poisonous. So let's eat them. That when we consume plant yes. foods, we essentially just <laughs> absorb these phytonutrients. And research has shown that these compounds help to even protect us from chronic diseases. They help to reduce inflammation. Yeah, that is a fantastic research. So hopefully I don't have to repeat everything that I just said. Yes, correct. We absorb those phytonutrients. They're not nutrients. We absorb those chemicals as well. And this is what in the long run destroys your gut. You're not an insect, so it won't kill you right away. But in the long run, you will get immune disorders. Potent and helping to protect us from cancer and heart disease. And so fruits and vegetables are very rich in these phytonutrients. And to make sure that we get wow. a good mix of these nutrients into our system, we want to try to aim to eat a variety of different colors. And so diversity is at least as important as quantity. So let's explore each of these colors and the benefits that they can provide. Let's so first and foremost, she wants to talk about foods that fight inflammation. But now she goes on a rant about different colors and therefore certain phytochemicals that are also so good for us. There is nothing good about it, first and foremost. But secondly, why do you list those foods that come with such a variety of phytochemicals if you want to fight inflammation? You know, or you should know, that people can react very allergenic to those phytochemicals. Some people have so-called gluten intolerances. Actually, all people are gluten intolerant to varying degrees yet again. Point of the story is you should recommend meat, animal foods that are not inflammatory at all. Let's start with red colored foods like tomatoes and red bell peppers and Meat? watermelon. Maybe. They're rich in no. lycopene. And this is a potent antioxidant that helps to reduce damage that are done by harmful molecules wow. that are known as free radicals. The whole antioxidant theory, <laughs> even though why would you like to consume antioxidants in the first place, is beyond me. But anyways, the whole antioxidant theory is just that and has been debunked multiple times. They only tested antioxidants extracted from plants in test tubes in a laboratory. There was never proven that any antioxidant found in the plant will go through your digestive system and aid you in any shape or form. Look it up. Lycopene is also thought to protect against prostate cancer as well as heart and lung disease. Yeah. One quick note about fruits and veggies whose flesh is white or pale colored on the inside, like this here apple or eggplants, for example, most of the color is in the skin, and that's also where you're going to find most of the phytonutrients. So if you want to reap the maximum benefit... From maximum! The veggies, Those people are so caught in their intellect that it's unbelievable. This is why I said they are studied idiots. Think about it logically. All of those plants that you hold in your hand, that you presented there, they're not found in our natural environments. They are all manufactured. I said this a billion times here on my channel, but in case this is your first time visiting, let me explain one more time. Those plants are manufactured by humans. They are bred. Their wild counterparts have very little flesh and very little sugar. And on top of that, they taste pretty disgusting. Most of the time, people wouldn't eat them at all. If you would eat them, you would eat maybe one once in a while, maybe when it is the season. You never had access to those sweet, sweet sugar balls that you call an apple or mangoes or whatnot. There is absolutely no physical adaptation for us to eat those foods. Do you get it? Don't make it complicated. It doesn't grow in our natural environment. Those are Frankenstein foods. So therefore, you don't need them. Eat what is natural to you and you will be healthy. Try to enjoy it with the skin whenever you can. <laughs> yeah, then sure, because the pesticides are not sprayed on the skin, are they? No. Orange and yellow foods like carrots and sweet potatoes and squash, and these provide <clears throat> carotenoids. Why? And these help to promote communication between our cells. They may also help to prevent heart disease. And you might have heard about carotenoids also helping out with our eyesight. It might come Again, this is just test tube philosophy. There has never been a study that really can show that you will reduce your heart attack risk by eating carrots. Never. The only reason why she shows those plans yet again is because she bought into the dogma of eat the rainbow, be the rainbow. Why would you? There's absolutely no point for it. On top of that, if you say that they fight heart disease, 
what will you do if you ingest a bunch of carbohydrates, which you will do if you eat vegan? So how will you battle heart disease if you're consuming all of that sugar? But no, it's the bad meat, of course. I forgot. Green foods are very nourishing, especially leafy greens like kale and spinach <laughs> and even broccoli. These are rich. Yeah, she just debunked herself. She just explained that she has no idea about nutrition because there's virtually no nutrition within leafy greens. But there are oxalates, which are anti-nutrients. Uh, sorry, phytonutrients. And flavanols, which help to reduce reduce the risk of vascular disease and they just generally help to reduce the effects of inflammation all around. And then uh, yeah, but if you would eat your species specific diet, which is predominantly meat based, raw and some cooked, then you wouldn't need to lower your heart disease risk. Do you get it? Purple colored foods like blueberries and blackberries, no. but also purple cabbage and grapes and plums. And these are rich in the powerful compounds called anthocyanins, which are believed to delay cellular aging. And they also block the formation of clots in our blood, which can help to keep our hearts healthy. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are hundreds, thousands of compounds Millions. in these fruits and veggies that we haven't explored because we wouldn't have the time to, but they all help in their own unique way to help fight inflammation and other various diseases. So now look at this, right? She talks a big talk, many big words around here but the reality is of course try living off that rainbow honestly just try living off that and this is a dare to you as well pick up limes practice what you preach and try it out for a year just eat that rainbow because what you describe is that this is all we need this is the healthiest food on the planet so please i dare you honestly Please eat this food. I would even pay for this food for a whole year. I know you don't need it. You have almost 4 million subscribers. I would do it. Honestly, if you could prove to us that you would be healthy afterwards by eating only blueberries, limes, grapes, bananas, citrus fruits, oranges, carrots, tomatoes, etc., etc., you would be a freely after all of this. This is terribly unhealthy and you know it. There is no sustenance in this food. You will still have to drink your plant protein shakes in between, still eat some tofu just to exist. And you will be miserable either way. But I dare you, yet again, eat only those healthy foods and let's see where you are in one year's time. It really helps to get a variety whenever we can. <sighs> Ridiculous. These next ingredients aren't particularly colorful per se, but they do have very strong anti-inflammatory kind of properties. And these are the basis of a lot of meals, and these are garlic, onion, and ginger. So let's start first with <laughs> garlic. These contain- Yeah, those foods are actually highly inflammatory and they are antiseptic. So what they do is they destroy everything that you consume and they can even attack your own cells. This is super unhealthy to eat. Nanosulfur compounds, and then onions contain compounds called quercetin. And both of these phytonutrients have anti wow inflammatory benefits, but they also have been shown to prevent cancer and microbial and viral infections. Sure. Then there's ginger and these contain the- Yeah, again, that has been tested by taking onions and actually putting it onto microbes. And yes, it kills off microbes. So why would you like to consume it then? Phytochemical called gingerols. And this helps to reduce inflammation and helps to prevent the progression of various chronic diseases. How? Oxidation is a very necessary and normal chemical reaction that happens in our bodies. But, but you need antioxidants. <laughs> sometimes an imbalance can occur in this reaction, which can lead to something called oxidative stress. Oh, now, oxidative man. stress can cause inflammation, but it can also damage our cells, mm. proteins, DNA. Yeah. It can even cause premature aging and even certain kinds of diseases. Now, luckily, there are certain compounds called antioxidants that help to restore the balance. Thank God. Antioxidants are really rich in the fruits and vegetables that we just talked about, but also in spices. Spices and dried herbs <laughs> offer the most antioxidant. Plant. Yeah, spices are basically excitotoxins. You are poisoning yourself. Again, I dare you. Another dare here with Uncle Bobby. Just take that jar as it is. Can you see it, guys? That one there in the background. And chuck it down. See what's going to happen. See how healthy it is. On the other hand, take a steak the size of the jaw, eat it raw, and see what happens then. Simple. Wait than almost anything else. And this so is simple. especially true for oregano, rosemary, and thyme. And these are ingredients that we've combined together in our homemade Italian seasoning mix. You can make this mix just once and then keep it in your pantry. And then you're going to have it at the ready to just scoop up into your favorite pastas or pizza sauces to add a whole Exactly. Eat <laughs> Come on, man, really. Eat pasta and pizza and sprinkle some herbs on top. Anti-inflammatory. Antioxidants <laughs> all at once. It's just so simple. 
And then there's also... Man, they're loaded with gluten and you know that too. Wow. Butter. This is another antioxidant powerhouse because <laughs> it's really rich in a phytonutrient that's called curcumin. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, curcumin Nutrients. isn't very readily absorbed into our bodies unless it's yeah. combined with black pepper, which can help to increase its absorption by 2,000%. Wow. So that's why you can often see that when we're making curries, we usually combine our turmeric with black pepper. But so you healthy. also see that whenever we're making delicious drinks. And why is diabetes and heart disease so rampant in India then if it is so healthy? Hmm. Like our golden milk <laughs> recipe. Or you could batch make our golden latte drink mix. I feel like it's just such a lovely way to wind down in the <sighs> evening. Scooping up a little Super. bit of this powder, combining it with your favorite warm plant-based milk. It's just so delicious and nourishing. Don't call it nourishing. It's not nourishing at all. Please look up which nutrition is in that plant milk. It's not even milk. There is no nutrition at all. Even the Indians, they use raw milk for that and therefore they get nutrition. Anyhow, before you proceed to call them phytonutrients over and over and over again, ask yourself, is there a biological adaptation or a need for curcumin in the human body? If you tell me that a human being can go throughout his life supremely healthy without ever consuming curcumin, and by the way, this is what humans have done for thousands and thousands of years, but well, if you agree to that, that explains that curcumin is not a nutrient. Now let's talk about beans for a second. They contain a very hey. powerful phytonutrient that we've already discussed. It's not a nutrient. Before, uh, called anthocyanins. We saw that in the beans. blueberries, blackberries, <laughs> and purple cabbage. Yeah, but why don't you talk about the lectins that they contain as well? Those have like a blue not interesting. purple color, right? No. And so do certain beans, like red beans, black beans, pinto beans. These are especially really high in these anthocyanins. And beans are so also disgusting. very high in their fiber content, which has been shown to reduce insulin sensitivity and also to reduce inflammation. Everything is opposite day nowadays. You either really don't know or you're just misleading your almost 4 million subscribers. This is the opposite of anti-inflammatory. It is just inflammation. Everybody knows, of course, intuitively, that beans will wreck your gut. It is due to the lectins and other anti-nutrients found in the beans that will destroy your gut in the long run. Most of the time, people cannot digest them anyways and they poop many of them out, which leads to more distress to your digestive system. Yoo-hoo! And then there's soy hey. beans. And these are something that you see us enjoy a lot in the form of edamame soy. beans, tempeh or tofu. And they're rich Phyto in phytonutrient that's called estrogens. You might also sometimes nutrients. hear about soy being controversial because it contains phytoestrogens. And we do have a whole article on soy in case you're interested and want to learn more. I'll link it for you below. But in short, the results of these studies on phytoestrogens have been conflicting in the past. But more mm. recent studies conclude that soy is not only safe for consumption, but that it is also very protective <laughs> against different Eat the soy. cancers. And it's generally recommended because it's a very great protein source. Yeah, it's and fantastic. that's another way that we can actually best. help to reduce inflammation wow. is by consuming more plant-based proteins. I can't say animal anything proteins. anymore. Certain animal it's proteins done. like red meat and dairy have been linked with increased inflammation, whereas plant proteins have been linked with decreased yes, inflammation. Yes, exactly. Let's smile about that. Let's be so happy when we say that because there was a study that showed it. It's absolutely ridiculous. How has that study been conducted? Let me ask you, and you know it yourself if you look into the study, did the participants eat only red meat? Of course not. If you look into the work of Dr. Sean Baker, you will see that they now finally conducted one carnivore study in which the people truly just ate red meat. Of course, cooked in that instance, so I'm not a proponent of that either, but nevertheless, just meat. Of course, they saw a significant decrease in all kinds of civilization diseases, such as inflammation, heart attacks, diabetes, etc., etc., etc. So they saw an improvement in those health markers. The studies that you talk about, they conduct on standard American diets, in which people eat hamburgers. Hamburgers are already plant-based. Don't you see it? A Big Mac is predominantly bread lettuce, sauces, sugar, and then a little bit of meat. The standard American diet is plant-based already. People eat roughly 80% plants anyways. And this is why they have high inflammation, not due to the meat. Mama meat. Mama mia. 
<laughs> I've always been yeah. so fascinated with gut health and our guts are these intricate ecosystems that trillions of microorganisms call home. And some of these yeah. microorganisms promote inflammation, whereas others mm. are thought to reduce it. And fiber is one source that can fuel the growth of the beneficial gut microorganisms that help to support- That's so amazing. Health. So this is fiber. This is insoluble fiber. You cannot digest it. It ends up in your colon, ends up rotting there. And yes, you're right. The microbes eat the fiber. Do you know what they do with the fiber? Ever looked into it? Those microbes in your colon, they start digesting that fiber and they start converting it to butyrate. Sounds familiar? Butyrate, butter, yes, is a saturated fat that is predominant in butter. It is a saturated fat, super unhealthy. So your body goes out of the way to break down the fiber through those microbes in order to extract still some saturated fats. Because guess what? Your body needs saturated fats. But there is nothing healthy about this process. You would be much better off eating butter. All optimal health. Now, some sources of fiber include the fruits and vegetables and beans that we've discussed, but also it's very rich in whole grains. Whole grains are incredibly nourishing and filling, so you can aim to add them whenever- If they are so nourishing, yet again, just eat whole grains. Here is another dare, just eat whole grains. The starch solution, give it a go. Just eat grains for a whole year. No B vitamin supplements, no supplements whatsoever. No sauces either, please. Just eat grains. Those grains that you see right there, because they are so nourishing, just eat them. Do you understand how ill you are? You're completely delusional. It is crazy. It is sickening, to be totally honest. Think about it. If I would say, I'm just going to eat liver for one year straight, I can do it. No problem. If I say, I'm going to eat fish for a whole year, just fish, I can do it. It is possible. The same applies to meat and all the other animal foods. You cannot do that with those plant foods. So how can you say that they are nutritious? Wherever you can. Wow. It's delicious to enjoy with meals, of course. Wow, but you could also have something like oats do? together with breakfast, or you could add it into energy bars, or even just add grains to salads. And also, I don't know if you knew this, but popcorn is a whole grain in and of itself. So feel free to pop some popcorn to enjoy it. <laughs> yes. We're going to end strong here with omega-3 fats. Omega-3 fats strong. support so many different functions in the body and they're the starting point for the creation. By the way, nothing was anti-inflammatory even by her standard. She didn't say why they are anti-inflammatory. She simply said, yeah, and this will help with anti-inflammation as well because of the antioxidants, because of the phytonutrients. What is anti-inflammatory about it? When I talk about meat, I can tell you why it is anti-inflammatory or not inflammatory at all because it does not have anti-nutrients aka phyto chemicals. What do your plants do? Tell us. Inflammation. Omega-3 fats are essential, which means our bodies can't make it on its own, which means that we have to consume them directly from food. Oh, wow. And plant-based sources of omega-3 fats are ground flax seeds, ground chia seeds, hemp seeds, and walnuts. But they're not. And why do you lie to your audience? So this is not omega-3. There is no omega-3 here at all. There is no DHA, no EPA. This is just ALA. So it needs to be converted. Aha. Uh -huh. Not everybody can convert it properly. Hey, <laughs> but you just said that omega-3s are essential. So what should we do? No wonder then that vegans have smaller brains. Look up your studies, research it yourself. You will see smaller brain size within vegans because they don't get omega-3s. Their body needs to convert all of those ALAs. In most cases, it cannot be done. And in case you're interested, we have an awesome recipe for a super seed. Fantastic. Where you essentially just take all of these omega-rich ingredients, you mix them together in a jar, and then it's super easy to have it on hand. You can sprinkle it onto salads or smoothie bowls or onto yogurts. Which Dude, you do know that even if you would convert all of this here in the background, you would get maybe maybe 0, 0.00 something of a gram of DHA and EPA. Imagine just eating a piece of sushi instead. What I like to do on top yeah. meals to get an extra boost of energy and omega every day. <laughs> Plus, you can consider an omega supplement from algae. Consider which, it. Fun fact: algae is where fish get their. Yeah, own. fun fact: it is so great to consume all of those seeds, but take a supplement on top. So because they work so good. Fish and get it straight from the source. And as usual, we do have a whole article oh. about omega-3 fats. So Amazing. if you want to delve deeper, the link is in the description box. Oh, thank you so much.
What I usually like to do, and this is really Tell one of my philosophies, is to focus more on the foods that we can be enjoying more of and let those foods naturally displace the foods that we maybe ought to be eating a little bit less of. Yeah, so for example, all the plants and eat meat instead. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Wow, yet again, opposite day with those vegans. Shocking. Anyways, long enough as it is. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your support. All right, but this is it. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.